it's psychotic. You it's, were done. I could tell. I was done at the turn. And uh, by 13, it was a nightmare. All right, so enough of the um, the niceties and the frivolities. Uh-huh. We got some serious stuff to take care of today. And we start off with the Yankees pinstripe report brought to you by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. What a mess. So if we were going to sit back and say that this week was important to tell us where the Yankees are, well, they're in fourth place. <laughs> Uh, They won two and they lost five against their two division rivals. They are now behind the Blue Jays, and they're six and a half games out of first place. It's not good. Uh, It it has not looked good for a while now. They cannot score over four runs a game. Uh, They do not play clean baseball. They do not run the base as well. And on top of that, on top of that, you have to have a situation where an umpire misses a call by a half a foot. In the bottom of the ninth inning with Rugnet Odor pinch hitting. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, I tweeted this out last night. I'm not for criticizing the umpires for every loss because there's so much that takes place before the umpires call and usually so much that takes place after the umpires call that you can't just blame it on that. But that was inexcusable. That was so inept. And the thing that bothers me, they don't make the umpire available. The umpire is not disciplined. I mean, if you do something so poor in your job, you're going to be called on the carpet. I, I doubt that he's going to be called on the carpet. And then Phil Nevin, who has a port in his neck because he's got medicine intravenously into his body, he comes out and gets thrown out. Then they throw out Carlos Mendoza, who was the wrong guy because it was Marcus Timms, the hitting coach, that was screaming Fordham University at the umpires, and he didn't even get thrown out. They threw out Carlos Mendoza. And, I mean, what a what a perfect ending to an absolutely abysmal week for the Yanks. Um, there's so many things to cover about it. We'll get to all of it. But what a mess. Two and five. Split four games with Tampa Bay. Get swept by the Red Sox after you'd won three, uh, 11 straight games over the last couple of years uh, at Yankee Stadium against the Red Sox. You don't even show. You don't. The biggest crowd of the year last year, uh, last night, I was there on Saturday night, had a great time, but they just don't hit. So if you're going to be bad and you're going to be boring, that is a really bad combination. Now they have today off, then they'll go to Minnesota. And if you say, who are the two most disappointing teams in baseball? You'd say Minnesota would be first, and now the Yankees are second. So the Yankees better get very, very right with three games in Minnesota because Minnesota loses to everybody now. Yankees have to win three games. I'm sorry, you have to win three games. You have to bounce back from a performance like you had over the weekend by just flexing and beating a team that you're supposed to beat. Well, I I don't know where to begin, Michael, but usually when we get down to criticizing a team that is collapsing and underachieving like this, it this is part this is this is the joy I think of a talk show to be able to to dissect and start getting into why a team is in the situation that they're in and all that. And in any other sport there'd be somebody to blame. Who do we blame? Because it would be easy for me to come on the air and say, all right, fire Boone, fire Cashman. I don't know who to blame here. I know the fans have targeted both, but specifically recently Boone, and you were talking about the uh, called third strike and Odor. How is everybody getting thrown out but him? Honestly, how is everybody getting thrown out but him? A manager is supposed to protect his players, is supposed to protect his assistants. He's got to be the one to get thrown out of that game. But is he to blame for this team being six and a half games out of first place and just two games above 500? Because we go back and forth like a pendulum, Michael. Oh, well, don't blame Boone because there's a there's a fundamental flaw with how this team was built. All right, well, let's blame Cashman. Well, you can't blame Cashman because look at the success the team has had. Well, who do we blame, Michael? Who, who's who got the target on their back? Is it the manager? Because if it's the manager, today would have been the day, right? Day off. You're, you've got a, a winnable road trip here, so you can give a nice soft landing to the new manager. If it's the manager's fault, today would be the day. If it's the general manager's fault, you know, I, how often do you see general managers get fired in the middle of the season? Are they going to be able to re, reboot everything that they've done by bringing in a new general manager? So I, I don't know how you fix this. Well, I mean, I, I thought about this a lot coming in because I knew that callers would probably say, well, who gets blamed? And I'm sorry, the guy who gets blamed for this is Brian. And you know, for the longest time, I'm a big Brian fan. And just because I think this is his fault, that doesn't mean that I'm not a big Brian fan. This team is poorly put together. Uh, They're very limited in what they could do. Um, 
there there doesn't seem to be any kind of balance in the lineup whatsoever. We've had callers for the longest time. Why don't they have lefty batters in the lineup? It's it's criminal that they don't. And when you've got a, a bullpen full of right-handers like the Red Sox do and like the Tampa Bay Rays do, you don't match up with them because you have no balance whatsoever in your lineup. You have lanes that a manager could bring in a righty and just get you out. So um, usually a manager gets banged at a time like this. But I will tell you this, if Brian would fire uh, Aaron Boone right now, he'd be the biggest hypocrite of all time. Aaron Boone is is executing his vision, Brian's vision, and his front office's vision, and working with the tools that Brian gave him. Now, the fact that Aaron Boone didn't get thrown out, you say, I have no problem with that. This guy's been thrown out more than any manager in baseball. Just, just early this week, he had veins popping out of his neck and got thrown out. Maybe he just felt that he was trying to exude some calm to his team so they wouldn't panic, and then Phil Nevin got thrown out. I mean, if he had got thrown out on top of Nevin and Mendoza, they wouldn't have anybody managing. They'd have the catching coach come out and play a uh, manage. Uh, coach at first base and have the first base coach, Reggie Willits, go out and do the third base coach in the bottom uh, of the extra inning. So I don't blame Boom for that. I know a lot of people jumped on him for that. But the bottom line is this team is poorly constructed. They're a one-way ticket. We've always said that the only way the Yankees win is when they hit home runs. They are not hitting home runs. They don't know how to create runs. They don't know how to play small ball. You saw what the Red Sox did yesterday. Some of their best players, they would just – hit a ground ball to the right side, move the guy from second to third, sack fly. That's not in the Yankee bag of tricks. I don't understand why. They're all up there. All they do is strike out or hit home runs, and the home runs they hit are usually solo shots, and that's why they are where they are, Peter. Right. So, I, so, so tell me how we move forward here, because when we talked about this Friday, you essentially said that on this team, we do not have a lineup of players that are capable of adjusting and doing what the Red Sox do. Um, at times this year, Judge has been Aaron Judge and has hit the ball. He's in a decent spot right now. Not great, not bad. Stan has had moments. We had that 11-game period where he was fantastic, but by and large has not been special. So what do you do if you're not able to hit home runs and you're not able to play small ball? You probably don't, you, you probably don't make the playoffs. If you don't start hitting home runs soon, you probably don't make the playoffs. That's all there is to it. So uh, we'll have Buster only on a little bit later on. And they're going to start cracking down on sticky stuff for pitchers. And maybe the pitchers will come down a little bit and the Yankees could start hitting home runs again. But uh, maybe the, it would also adversely affect Yankee pitchers. Well, wait, how, how big of a factor are people saying that is right now? Huge. Well, what, can you give me more details on what sticky stuff is? Sticky stuff is uh, you, you put illegal substances on your hand so that it creates friction of the ball coming off your hand and gives you more revolutions. The more revolutions that you have on the baseball – the more it moves, the more it stays up rather than goes down. It's very, very tough for hitters to hit. Great breaking balls as well. You almost become unhittable. And now they're saying that pitchers have so much sticky stuff on their hands that last year when there wasn't anybody in the ballpark and a guy released the ball, you ever rip open Velcro? Yeah. That's what it sounded like coming off pitchers' hands. Oh, in the uh, okay, because there, no, there was no crowd noise. There's no crowd noise, so you have, pfft, like that. Wow. And uh, they're going to crack down on that. And even the union is in on it because the players, the hitters on the union are going, we can't have this. We can't strike out 250 times a year. And we're doing this not because we can't hit, but these guys are putting illegal substances. And then Josh Donaldson comes out and said, well, isn't it funny that four players, four pitchers in the minor leagues got suspended last week because they cracked down because of sticky stuff. And then the next time out, Garrett Cole had low revolutions on his pitches. So, I mean, if they're going to start, like, directing it toward Garrett Cole, that'll hurt the Yankees, too, if Garrett Cole is successful at such a high level because of sticky stuff. But but here's the thing, Michael. That doesn't solve all your problems because everybody's going through this, and yet the Yankees are still on the lower end of, of the offense. So, if everything goes up... Doesn't necessarily, yeah, the Yankees will score more runs. The Yankees will be a better offensive team. But the teams that are better than them offensively, all those teams will also be better. So you're still stuck where you are. But well, here's, right. the, here's the difference, though. The Yankees are a home run hitting team. Other teams have other ways to score. So that's why you're in a situation okay. where the Yankees would benefit if all of a sudden well, they start hitting home run. Well, the other day against the Red Sox, they struck out 15 times. So you're going to still strike out. 
you know, the, because they're still trying to hit home runs. I'm just saying it's all relative to what you're dealing with. So everybody else is going to improve. So maybe they'll improve a little bit, but Michael, it's it's a lot. I mean, they're they're like a hundred runs off what they were through sixty games back in twenty nineteen. I mean, so Unbelievable. they're not nearly the team that they have been. So but the worst nightmare I think for Yankee fans. You see, if it was just Boone, yeah, you fire Boone, you bring somebody else in. There's been plenty of teams. You know, right now the Montreal Canadiens are a win away from going to the third round. They fired their coach in the middle of the year. Uh, it, it happens. You can change managers. Yankees have won a championship changing managers in the middle of the year. But if it's a fundamental way this team was constructed, Michael, there's not a general manager that can come in here and fix it on the fly. No, How you do can't. you fix this on you the can't. fly? You don't. You can't. You can't. So here, the only reason you would change a manager, and I'm not advocating for it, this is a business, okay? And I get so many tweets throughout um, the game. We love you guys. You're great. The, the broadcast is fun. But I can't watch this anymore. And once the stadium, and I think the next homestand, when they come home, it'll be about 95% capacity. If they can't sell tickets, then they might have to make an optics change where, hey, something's different. We're bringing someone in. But you firing a general manager in the middle of a season is, is a – is a recipe for giving up on the season. It's a recipe for disaster. I, you, you want recipes? I, I, a friend of mine who's this unbelievable stats guy, his name is Bill Chuck. That's his name, okay? Mm-hmm. The Yankees lead the majors hitting to 58 double plays. The Rays are last hitting into 27. The Yankees lead the majors hitting into 28 double plays with no outs. The Yankees lead the major leagues hitting to nine double plays with the bases loaded. They are killing rally after rally. And if you listen to the game or watch the game yesterday on ESPN, A-Rod was teeing off on the Yankees that they just don't play baseball the right way, that they're, they're, they, they were constructed the wrong way, too many right-handed batters. And, you know, people laughed at me the other day when I said this last week. The, the loss of Aaron Hicks, who wasn't doing much, okay, but the loss of Aaron Hicks – creates so much of a domino effect of negative stuff. He's a switch hitter. Boom. The lineup is balanced out. Right-hander comes in. He's that lefty pothole because he spins around to the left side, and he's still a threat to hit. He's out. Now he's out. So that means that Brett Gardner is your center fielder. He's 37 years old. He's not hitting 200. That's a problem. Now you also have a very fragile, fragile, fragile lineup. Giancarlo Stanton couldn't play three games. This week, after they rested him on Thursday. Well, we're resting him Thursday, hoping he could play three games. He played Friday and Saturday, couldn't do anything, and then yesterday pinch hit, and he struck out, and he got booed. Aaron Judge, who's having a tremendous season. He really is. But they have to really be careful and manage him. So they want to keep him off his feet a lot, so they have him DH, and he's been doing very, very well. When you have him DH, then you've got to have Clint Frazier in right field. I don't think he's a good right fielder. You've got to have Andujar in left field. He's not a good left fielder. He's much more comfortable than he was, but he's certainly not Barry Bonds out there. And it creates a lot of moves that Boone can't make. Another one, all right? Let's say you play Aaron Judge in center field. Well, you play Aaron Judge in center field, then he's out of position. The other two guys are out of position. Now, let's say you DH Stanton. Then you have Aaron Judge in right field, so he's got to play in the outfield. That means you have to play Gardner in center. So that means that Andujar or Frazier have to sit out. Guys that should be in the lineup, one of them has to sit out. And one other thing, everybody tiptoes around this. Nobody wants to criticize the guy because he has been unbelievable for the first two years as a Yankee. A lot of the blame of what's going on with the Yankees, and it's not because he's not trying, is DJ LeMahieu is having a terrible, terrible year. For the first two years of his Yankee career, he had 370 with runners in scoring positions. 370. He was automatic. Now he's in the low 200s. He doesn't hit for any power anymore. He occasionally will get singles. He's hitting under 250. That's not DJ LeMayu. Everything starts from the top. If LeMayu is not the player that he was last year when he hit 364, well, he's hitting 100 points lower than that, and the slugging percentage is so far below what he's done in the past. You know, Don, you said, well, what can they do? If he's not going to hit, right, and if Stanton can't play every day, and when he doesn't play every day, he can never get in the hot streak like he was, there is no solution for this. No. There's absolutely no solution. Yeah, listen, we could talk about the manager. We could talk about the general manager. But 
players have to play to the back of their baseball card. They just have to. And every Yankee fan wanted LeMahieu back. We all thought that that was the thing to do. Remember, there were Yankee fans who said it shouldn't matter how much DJ wants. They should pay him whatever he wants. And this is the season you're getting, a guy batting around 250? And you know how it is in baseball, Michael. Those situations always find you. Who ends up coming up when the game's on the line? The guy that raked the last couple of years in those situations. Raked. Now it's almost like he's an automatic out. And the frustration is starting to show on him. So, yeah, the players got to play to the best of their ability. So blame the analytics, blame Brian Cashman, blame Aaron Boone, blame all the people you want. But I'm sorry, you got to get more out of the players that are healthy. And D.J. LeMahieu has been such a major part of what this team has been the last couple of years in the regular season, and now is a shell of what he was. And and it seems such an easy... I look at Boone, and I blame him for the way they run the bases. Uh, If you want to say that... ...team engaged... You can you can put all the blame you want on the manager because as you always say, Don. Well, if you're not going to blame him for that, then what do you, why is there a manager? But okay, there's no buttons for him to push. When you have an engineer in front of a board and none of the buttons work, he he cannot make it sound good. So Boone is limited in what he can do right now. And another thing that you're seeing is that the pitching is starting to return to the mean. It's a little bit of a correction. The, the pitching carried this team. The loss of Kluber is gigantic. Now, all of a sudden, a guy like Lucas Litke, who was unhittable for two weeks, he's gotten hit the last couple of times. That's what's going to happen. So you need Britain back in a hurry. It's a mess. I'm telling you, yep. it's a mess. I wish that I could sit here and give you positive stuff. You know that I'd love to see the Yankees win. It's good for the Yes Network, the whole deal. But they, they're limping to Minnesota today, and I don't have any solutions for you, everybody. I just well, don't. I mean, well, it's easy ugly. Answer, it is fa- ugly. Fans aren't going to want to hear this, Michael, but you're almost stuck in just having to you know, do what you can with this roster, and then if you're going to make a change, it comes at the end of the season where if you're going to change the general manager and, and change the way this team is going to go about things, that's an off-season move. And then Boone will yep. get fired in that transition, right? So – if a new general manager comes in, he's going to want to bring in his manager and you move in a different direction. So you're kind of left right now with just going as is and just hope you can salvage the season because what what moves are you going to make, Michael? Who who are you going to trade here that's going to make things better during this season? Who's going to want Stanton? Who's going to want LeMayhew? Who's going to want Sanchez? There's not a pitcher you can afford to deal because you're going to need every single starting pitcher you possibly can. And the bullpen, too, if you've got any shot – all those guys have to be untouchable. So I don't and, know what to and, do. And so let's say they want to go out and get a center fielder, and there's, the name out there is Kettle Morte, who, who's, who's having a really good season for Arizona, switch hitting, center fielder, right. just what you need. Really good point. But Buster only on the broadcast yesterday said, well, the Yankees would have to give a lot up to Arizona, but they'd have to have Arizona pay Marte's salary this year because they will not go over the threshold. So the Yankees have maybe $5 million to play with. So you can't, you've can't. you got so many areas that you have to improve, and you only have so much money to do it. And if I'm Hal Steinberg, I'll go, the way this team is playing, you want me to go over the threshold and lose draft picks and get taxed as well? He's in a little bit of a corner here, and it's not fair to him because he's given them everything that he wanted. And this is the team that they put together. And, you know, you could blame injuries and things like that. All right, the injury – the, the injury to Aaron Hicks is you, you couldn't have predicted that, although he's hurt all the time, but nobody thought that he was going to miss the entire season. But for the most part, everybody, let's all be honest, this is the team that they put together. Yes, they missed Luke Voigt, but this is essentially the team that they put together. Frazier hasn't hit. Glaber Torres doesn't hit for power anymore, although he had a home run uh, the other day. Um Rugnet Odor strikes out so much. He's had some big hits for them, but he strikes out all the time. DJ LeMay, who's 8 for 40 with runners in scoring position. You know what that is? That's a 200 batting average for a guy who's close to a 400 batting average for the Yankees since he's gotten here. Just go, Gary Sanchez, although he's hitting better of late, he still doesn't scare anybody. So all the people that they put there, they're not doing their jobs. So you can't blame it on the injuries to Voight and Hicks. Yeah, those things hurt. But in the past, the Yankees have had injuries, and they won 103 games. Nobody has stepped up. Nobody has stepped up. I wish I could give you positive news. I'd love to give you positive news. And I know that if I sat here right now today on this show, and I lied to you, and I put lipstick on a pig, 
then why should you even listen when I'm telling you good news? Because if I don't tell you the truth when things are bad, then you shouldn't even believe me when I say things are good. And that's why I always laugh when the Yankee boy stuff gets out. I never lie to you. I never lie to you. This is an untenable situation that they're in now. And if they continue to lose at this rate, whether it's warranted or not, somebody is going to lose their job simply because of the fact you've got to make a change to engage the fans so that they come to the ballpark and watch the games on TV. Because right now, you keep losing like this and you score three runs a game, no one's coming. Is is Aaron Judge the only good, consistent, everyday player they have right now? Aaron Judge has very quietly had a great season. Uh, and I think he's played more games than anybody else. Gio Urshela has done well as well. But after that, that's it, though, that's right? That's it. Judge That's leads it. in every meaningful offensive category. And the fact is that Judge has about 30 RBIs, and with his numbers, he should have about 50 RBIs. But there aren't people on base. And when there are people on base, people hit a double plays. It's amazing what's happening. It's amazing. And you could ask Anthony. You could ask Anthony back in the studio. When they were going to Detroit and they were playing okay, even though they had swept the White Sox, I said, they're about to go into a little bit of a tailspin because they can't hit. Because pitching can only carry you so far. You cannot expect to get a shot out every single game. And when you keep, it's like riding a car and just putting your gas on the, acceler- the foot on the accelerator. You're going to burn the transmission out. And the pitchers are suddenly going to take a step back because every single time they step on the mound, they've got to be great. That's too much high leverage pitch by pitch by them. And sooner or later, it's going to come back and bite you. So, again, I wish I had better news for you. We'll talk to you, 1-800-919-3776. That's the Yankees Pinstripe Report brought to you by Woodbridge, a proud sponsor of the New York Yankees. Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi making classic wine for over 40 years. You know the number, 1-800-919-3776. A lot of stuff to do. Oh, yeah. Buster Only is going to come by later on, and we'll talk to him about, you know, he was there yesterday. He was the only member of the ESPN broadcast team that was there. Matt and A-Rod were back in Bristol, but Buster was at the stadium. I'm sure he found some stuff out, and we'll ask him about the crackdown Major League Baseball is about to have when it comes to the sticky stuff. The Michael K Show on 98.7 ESPN is brought to you by Geico. The real value in car insurance isn't how much you save, also the kind of service you get. Good thing Geico has been perfecting both for over 75 years. Kay LaGreca, Rosenberg, and you on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K. Show podcast. Well, that's awesome. Looking for more access to the show? That's right, man. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at TMKS ESPN. Master the mind of a master mind, man of God and a man of mind. Hands on like I give massage how I handle mine. Beats in the safaris on hard to find like I'm Kangaskhan. This special edition of the Michael K. Show on 98.7 ESPN is brought to you by Mayomi Wines. Presenting sponsor of today's Victory Over Cancer Classic, benefiting the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Um, we we'll take some phone calls at the end of this segment. Uh, the first part of the summer of K will begin. Oh, I can't, Don. How's this? this? Is very something's happening, Don. They 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 were nice enough, the people here at the uh, the Country Club Silver Springs, to deliver us a delicious double cheeseburger with some ointment on it as well. Peter dug into it like he, in the last man standing, and then they gave me the same thing, and I don't eat a cheeseburger. I don't like the ointment they have on it, but I will I will try it because it's the beginning of the summer. Don, of Don, this is summer pretty impressive. K. Look, this is a big burger with cheese, ointment, onions. It's a real thing, and Kay's going to try it. We've never seen this before. Well, he's Don. had ketchup before. He lost a bet early. Back I don't mean the, the ketchup. The ketchup's not on ketchup's it. Ketchup's on the side, it's Don. It's ointment. It's actual, like it's a like a white cream. Yeah, is it mayonnaise. Yeah, I'm not could sure. Be. Could be aioli. Could be mayo. Oh, it's probably aioli because this is a high end place. But 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 Don, don't even look past the cheese and the onions. He doesn't do that on burgers. No, I like onions on burgers. Oh, you do? Just yeah. not cheese. Che- I've never had American cheese in my life. See, Don, don't well, look past. This, this is a, this is a great is a start. Good little first step for the summer. Okay, that's Let's right. Not make yeah. this out to be that big a deal. I think now, it's absolutely uh, fabulous. I, I, I just, I hate, it's so weird that the things that look like punishment for Michael are just glorious to 99.9% of the population. The, 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 the hamburger he just showed was glorious. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful burger. Now, uh, Peter's album uh, over the weekend receiving a lot of critical praise. Thank you. Uh, but Peter's too cheap to give him away for free. So what we're doing, my book's coming out a week from tomorrow. Okay. And if, 
at my discretion, we're going to give about, away about three or four of them today. Oh, really? At, yeah. at the, oh, so it's going to make you get a book. You get a book. You get, I'm going to be Oprah. I'm going to be like Oprah. I wish I could do that. Maybe I could do that with some albums, too. Although, it, people, most people have a streaming service, so it's basically free already. True. But, uh, oh, this is exciting. Yeah. I still haven't gotten my copy, by the way. You know what? I, I have one for you right you here. You do? Yeah. Ooh. Let's go to the phones, though. More importantly, let's go to uh, Cullum in the Bronx. Cullum, talk to us. Mike, Adam, Peter, how you doing? Um, Mike, I did buy your book. I have listened to Peter's album. I don't know where to get a Texas Wiener, though, from Don. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting Don's on that. Don's getting that put together now as we speak, Cullum. No, that's just how bad it is that okay. they had to make up something lame. Because I <laughs> can't compete with these big boys. Uh, this, this, You know what? We'll let you finish your point. This was the moment where I became number three on the show. Oh, wow. Oh, no, no, no. Wow. No, Don, this is a huge mistake, though. Because this joke is going, and you do and you do love Texas Wieners. You should be working on the business right now. Have your agent get a hold of shot right, and you put slap your face on some Wieners. But I don't know how to make the sauce. <laughs> I don't want to put my face in Wieners. <laughs> All right, Colin, what do you have? So um, you 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 pretty much said everything that needs to be said about the Yankees, Mike. So I'm not going to say all the negatives and I'm not, I'm not that negative type of person. I want to try to see what we can do with this current roster and this current Yankee team to try to still salvage it. And what I think is this is what they've been talked about the year of the pitcher 2.0 and all that stuff and how terrible we are at the base pass. Let's lean into that. I say we should go out and try to get a guy like Max Scherzer and maybe try to get to be an 88, 90 win team, sneak into the wild card and then if we have by far the best pitching staff, anything is possible in the playoffs. But also, yeah, I don't see us going out and getting anybody else to fix this batting, but maybe we get a guy something like Billy Hamilton or something like that where it fixes Bates' pass problems, and he's definitely a, a, a high-level defender. I think we should just really go hard on pitching and defending because I don't think it's possible to fix what we did with this with this offense. Well, the, the, this year. You, you can't fix the offense this year. It, they either have to hit home runs or they're not, they're not going to make the playoffs. So I don't know if you can flip a switch and make them do it, but they either have to return to the back of their baseball card. The Yankees have no chance. In terms of getting a Scherzer, the Nationals aren't out of it yet. And again, the whole tax threshold thing hovers yeah. over it. Are you going to go over the tax threshold for a team that is not playing well? What what is this team done that Hal Steinbrenner should could go over the threshold? Do they seem like they're close? No, they just and I, don't. And, and, and that doesn't guarantee to solve your problem. Like the caller said, like lean into your situation. All right, you had another stud starter, but if your offense is going to stall, Michael. I don't know how much that's going to really guarantee anything. That's a lot to give up for a player that you're either going to have to give a lot of money to at the end of the year or let walk in free agency. And I don't think it even comes close to guaranteeing you even sneaking into the playoffs. No, because you've you got one of the best pitchers in baseball. You're six and six in the in the starts that Cole makes. Cole's the second best pitcher in baseball, and you're 500 in his starts. So what what does Scherzer guarantee you? Yeah, the Yankee pitching is fine right now. Uh, it, it, it's not a pitching problem, and, and yesterday was the first rehab start for several. You know, he's throwing 98 miles an hour, so that could be the pitcher you acquire. I, again, what I would do, yeah, i try to go out and get a left-handed hitting center fielder. I really would because, I mean, just for the balance of the lineup, and I don't think that you can run Brett Gardner at 37 years old out there all the time, and I would do that. But otherwise, i just leave it be and let's see if they can hit. Let's see if they can hit because they're built to hit. Nick and Weehawken, Nick. Hey, Michael, thanks for letting me on. Uh, I got a couple points, and you, you actually just made me think of a question at the end. Um, my, my problem is that Cashman basically put this team in a hole. He gave himself no options with this money situation. He's not going to go to Howe for more money. And he put together a lineup that's one-dimensional. How many different lineups are we going to see throughout the course of the year? I saw a stat the other day. It was like 55 in, in 60 games or something like that. And well, I mean, the, when they won 103 games, it was like 158 lineups and 162. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. I think I think Boone's trying to find the right combination. It's just not there. If no one hits other than Judge, you can juggle them whichever way you want. Right. And, and to the point about not hitting, do you think that every player is catered to this analytic hitting home runs or nothing approach? Like, I feel like we have guys that were hitting, you know, doubles, gap to gap, 
in the past that just aren't doing it anymore, you know? And Yeah, like LeMayo. And, and I, you know, I would say uh, Miguel Andujar was like a line-to-line guy, you know? Uh, Frazier was a line-to-line guy. He wasn't necessarily home run or bust. Well, I, I, of all the uh, – of Frazier and Andujar, Andujar of late has come on. I mean, he, he's closing in on 250. You'll take that. He looks okay. Frazier is still under 200, which I don't understand. And, you know, the Yankees built a team that they thought was going to hit 300 home runs and damn the defense. It's not a good defensive team. It's just not. Glaber's better at second than he is at short, but he plays shortstop. First base is not a, a real good defensive position for the Yankees. Uh, the corner outfield, if Judge isn't there, is not a good defensive position. Catcher has not been great for the Yankees, so they have to slug their way to the playoffs. And if they're not going to slug their way, they're not making the playoffs. Right now, if the season ended today, they would not be in the playoffs. It would be the Red Sox, and, the, and I believe it's the Blue Jays. I know the Blue Jays are ahead of the Yankees. I don't know if there's a team in the Central or the West that might be ahead of them, but the Yankees would not be in the playoffs today. Let's go to punch Pete. punch that up quickly. What was that? I said I can punch that up quickly for you. The wild card situation in the American League, Boston and Houston with Cleveland and Toronto ahead of the Yankees. Yeah, so it's it's a big, big, big bit of heavy lifting right now. But, you know, I don't think they're going to continue to uh, lose 10 out of 13 games. You know, the competition will go down. Let's see what they do against the Twins in Minnesota. Uh, let's go to Pete in Brooklyn. Pete. Pete? Michael, Pete? enjoy that Enjoy that burger. It looks glorious. <laughs> I'm going to uh, try. Two, yeah, two quick things. With regard to Boney, I don't need him getting thrown out last night. I mean, the guy's had a pacemaker put in. He needs to be thrown out twice in a week. I mean, right. he, he, should probably, he should probably spread that out a little bit. But more importantly, you and I have gone back and forth on the analytics you know, over the last couple of months. I personally don't get it. I don't know why they switched. You know, you often mentioned that the whole lead, the, you know, all of baseball is doing it. Mm-hmm. Still doesn't tell me why, you know, especially there was a, a proven formula. But anyway, I was going through the, the roster last night, and obviously it's monumentally unfair to compare this roster, you know, with the glory days of, of 96 to 20 to uh, 2001, which Cashman was obviously a part of. But if you go position by position, there are only four guys on this roster, and you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Cole, LeMahieu, Chapman, and Judge – but I think what he even made that roster. Am, am I, I not? Right. And like we're, we're we're holding this roster to some, you know, expecting these, these lofty, exorbitant. Oh yes, we've got another juggernaut. Do we? But one thing though, Pete. To be fair, okay. I mean, we have to be fair. And right now, it's easy to criticize them. You're comparing them to one of the great dynasties that have been built over the last forty years in baseball. Absolutely. So there are, and it's unfair. There, there are, and, and baseball was played a different way. Like everybody on that team made sense because it was a cohesive team like oh, o'neill fit for for a whole bunch of reasons pino fit and brocious fit for a whole bunch of reasons mm-hmm. whereas you look at this roster they're all the same you know slow pitch softball feaster famine swinger miss kind of guy you know now they're talking about bringing in another right-handed bat trevor story great you know which i think would just be putting a you know a, a band-aid on a on a broken arm and, and, and you know what? If you bring in story, if you bring in story, you know all the all the all the problems that causes. Because then you move, and we thank you for the phone call. You you move you move Glaber over to second. That means you have to move Lemayu over to first. That means Luke Boyd is out. I mean, he'll probably just be a bench player. Brugnet Odor is out. I mean, they just they wouldn't have any maneuverability whatsoever. So the bottom line is they'd all be out. Um, I don't know if Trevor Story's not a great year either. That's not what they need. They don't need another right-handed bat. They need a left-handed bat. The lineup is much too right-handed heavy. It just is. And that has nothing to do. I'm not even talking about the short porch and right. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about balance. They don't have balance in their lineup. And, you know, Brian always wants big, hairy monsters in the lineup. Well, the big, hairy monsters aren't scaring anybody. They, they, they're not hitting home runs. So the formula works if they hit home runs. For some reason, they've stopped hitting home runs. Is it the dead ball? Is it the excessive spin rate that people have because of the sticky stuff? Now, be careful what you, what you wish for because if they eliminate the sticky stuff, does that mean that Yankee pitching will also go down? Can, can I ask the question, why is baseball the only sport where it seems like these things that sound like they'd be from 100 years ago would never happen anymore continue to happen, like sticky stuff? 
How is that still a thing? I'm watching guys going to the belt and the brim. It feels like it would be 1955. I don't understand how it reoccurs. Because you don't want to, <clears throat> you don't want to know the answer. Because you, but it, 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 the sport is run poorly. Period. You you and cannot that, have I, a sport where the the ball is in question, where players are cheating, and you can't do anything about it. Peter, the poor the sport is run poorly. Now, does that does that mean I'm attacking Rob Manfred? No, I, I mean that just the, the structure of the union. And the the owners and the way they they can't get along with each other, but just the idea that the ball, Peter, can be in question. That's what I'm saying. How does the that happen? In question, it, How does it, that it happen? Makes... The pitchers can actually be fooling people at historic levels, and now in the middle of the season, now they might be able to try to do something about it. And the only reason they'll actually accomplish it is because the union agrees. Because if the union didn't agree, Michael, they wouldn't be doing it. All right, all right. Hold Hi, on. Don. I'm gonna I'm gonna try the cheeseburger. Wait, hold on. Let me set this up real quick. What? Michael has uh, picked up the burger. It is uh, a double, a, a large double cheeseburger, two slices of American cheese, some onions, some peppers, some ointment, as he calls it, of some sort. Michael's never had American cheese, and here he goes. The summer of K begins with a large bite going through both burgers. He's chewing both burgers, including two pieces of cheese, oh. some sort of oh. mayo or sauce. I'm not sure what it is. I don't see any grimace on his face whatsoever right now. I honestly do not, Don. I'm curious they, to hear his reaction. It, it, please, let's see hear the reaction. It's pretty good. Wow! I gotta see. You're enjoying it. Uh, I just have another cannot bite? believe this is the this is the animal we work with. Okay, and when I say animal, I, I'm just like lowest common denominator, but just trying to figure something out. That this gets the treatment. I mean, Peter's got the phone out. Drum roll. Play by play by Peter. It's amazing that Michael and I do play by play for a living, and Peter is the one that always does the best play by play on the show itself. At the same level, you eating crickets got. I know. Think about that. Del- you eat crickets at the same burger. level of Michael biting into an unbelievably gorgeous, delicious hamburger. Give me a break. Well, but, Don, don't focus on the negative. The bottom line is he wouldn't do it before, and I just watched him enjoy it. Well, I'm starting to believe the summer of cake could be say, real. This is clearly. A baby step into the summer of K. I think I'm running full board. I, I, I don't belly know. flop. I, the- I agree. I agree with you. I, if he continues to eat this burger during the break, to me, that's showing me something. Wow. This portion of the Michael K. Show on 9870 ESPN is brought to you by Truly Hard Seltzer. Truly Hard. Try Truly Hard Seltzer. Like I tried this burger. 100 mm. calories, one gram sugar, five percent alcohol, and 27 different flavors. Truly Hard Seltzer Beverage Company. Please drink responsibly. Now, we had our meeting today, Peter. Don does have a list. Don, you have a list? I do. Oh, I'm ready. All right, so that's.